Hi friends, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tina. I'm an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up! and I live in Nova Scotia, Canada. And to all my friends returning, welcome back. It has been a minute since I shared my last video with you here on YouTube. August 5th, I believe, uh, somebody commented, where are your videos? The last one was August 5th. So many of you may know, I got married on August 20th and we have been so busy this year, easily the easily hands down the busiest year of my life uh, and things are just starting to slow down now because I also cater for tuna charters every fall and um, we also have been busy um, with our garden and getting wood in for winter and it's just been one thing after another so that is why I have not been posting videos we have just been crazy busy um, but today I definitely wanted to get a video up on YouTube for you so this is going to be a quick one I'm hopefully not going to have to edit too much out of it, but it's based on a card that I shared on my Facebook page the other day, and I had a great response to it, so I thought I'm going to do this card. I have about four or five other cards that I've made that I am anxious to do videos for you, uh, including my wedding invitation. I have not forgotten about that, and that is using the slider card technique that was in my last video, but that card it's going to take a little bit longer to film. So this is a quick one and it's using a technique I shared a year ago using our Stampin' Blend markers and vellum and a beautiful embossing folder. So let's start stamping. Here is the card that we're going to be making today. I really think it's pretty and funnily enough I almost didn't share this because I thought you know it's really pretty in real life but maybe it's not so pretty you know when I take pictures and share it. But no, you guys have been loving this. So I am glad that you guys like this card because it was really fun to make. Um, so this is actually a fast card to do. And I'm just going to bring in the supplies. I'm using a piece of mint macaron cardstock. This measures eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Put that aside. Then I have a piece of our basic white cardstock. This measures four by five and a quarter. Then I have a piece of our vellum cardstock. This also measures four by five and a quarter. No, beg your pardon. This measures three and three quarters by five. And I am using the new um, Leafs Fall. Mm, I may have that wrong. Leafs Fall 3D embossing folder. And I just got this last week and I love anything to do with leaves. I'm also going to use another new product that I recently ordered, Simply Fabulous. Uh, the stamp set that I used on the original card, the sentiment came from Ringed of Nature. So I used the Thinking of You, but today I'm going to use There is Beauty in Everything. Oh my goodness, it is so nice to be stamping again, you guys. I have been having some serious stamping withdrawals. I've stamped basically when I really needed to get a card made, um, but I had all these fun Stampin' Up! products that I ordered and I haven't had a chance to play with. So, oh, let me tell you, I have been having a ball. Okay, so I'm going to pop this up a bit. And there we go. Okay, so I have my Stampin' Cut and embossing machine because we are going to emboss this um, vellum first. So when you look at this folder, you're going to see that there's a blank area here. So just keep that in mind when you put your vellum on, on where you, um, where you want that space to be and how much of that space you want left on your paper for stamping. So I always say um, bumps on bottom when you're trying to figure out what's going to be, <laughs> what's the top and what's the bottom of the paper. So you can see on your embossing folders that this is indented and then we've got the raised images. So I'm going to position that here and when you close it, you kind of get a better of idea of where everything is. Now I want to make sure that I have enough room for my sentiment, which I may put it this way on this card, but I think that's going to work great. So now I need my gray plate. I'm going to put that on top and run that through. Mm -hmm. Looky, looky. Oh my gosh. That is so pretty just as it is. So, so pretty. 
Okay, let's get this machine out of the way here. Okay, time to do some magic. I forgot to mention, you also need to use rubbing alcohol for this technique, so I'm using 99% um, rubbing alcohol that I just got from the drugstore. And I need a little dish, I need to go get a dish. Right, I have my dish and I'm bringing in a piece of black cardstock to put underneath so you can really see that, um, that really well. Let's put some rubbing alcohol in here. I don't need a lot. My pampered chef bowl is doing double duty. <laughs> and a piece of paper towel never hurts to have on hand. Now, again, you can see this is the back side and the raised is the front. So I'm going to color on the back side. So I'm going to grab some of my stamp and blends. I'm just going to grab a few. I can't remember out offhand exactly every color I used on my original card. Um, so I've pulled out Soft Succulent Parakeet Party. Uh, what is this? <laughs> this is Light Pumpkin Pie. I don't know that I want light pumpkin pie. Um, let's use light coastal cabana. I'm gonna pull in some light orchid oasis and old olive. Gotta have old olive. My favorite of all the greens. Do we want dark old olive? Sure, let's use dark. Oh, and we should pull in a yellow too. I have a list. Um, my tutorial is on my blog. I posted it yesterday. So all the colors that I did use on the original card are actually on that tutorial. Um, and that's at www.serenestamper.com. So I'm going to pull in some dark daffodil delight. So I think that's going to be the colors I'm going to use. Notice there's no mint macaron, which is the, um, it's the base of my card, but that's okay. I just like the contrast of it. So I'm going to start with my Dark Daft Delight and I'm just going to scribble a little bit here and there on the leaves and I do want a little bit here and that is all I'm going to do with all these colors guys. I'm just going to randomly add some. Now I do have at least one, maybe two videos um, where I demonstrated this technique, So Much Love, I believe is the title of it, So Much Love Vellum Blend Technique, maybe I did that just over a year ago, that video, and this is still one of my favorite techniques, it's such a wow, that might be too light, but I can go in and add color after this is dry if I need to. and some of the light orchid oasis. Now this color is not going to stay exactly where I'm putting it on these leaves and that's okay. I just kind of wanted to make sure I got certain colors in certain places. My old olive. <laughs> My soft succulent which I love this color on this particular card. Not looking like much yet, but if you haven't seen this technique, just you wait. Go and blow your socks right off. It is so pretty. Okay, and I definitely do want a little bit of a darker color in there. So I'm gonna bring in um, Sweet Sorbet. No, that's not what it's called. Um, yes, it is. Light Sweet Sorbet. And that's going to add a bit of a punch here and there. And I'm just going to I'm just going to put this color here. I'm not going to put any um, down at the bottom here. Okay. Now you can use. Um, let me show you here. I have I have a bunch of paint brushes here. Any one of them would work. I have my Aqua Painters water painters. They would work. I have, um, that's it. <laughs> now, one of my aqua painters has dried glue on it. And originally, in my original video for this technique, I had a paintbrush 
that had dried glue on it and I don't know where it is right now. But I don't throw these away because it's amazing how you can still use these. Um, so I, I liked I like the rough bit. I don't want, I mean, you could use one of these nice water painters, but I find you get a different look when it's um, all uniform like that. So I don't want to do that. I want something where I can just pounce and not worry about ruining the tip or anything. So here's the magic. Shall we zoom in? I think so. Okay, ready? I am pouncing, pouncing, pouncing. And I'm going to pounce all over this to get all that ink moving and doing its doing its thing. Now you may wonder does it have to be 99% rubbing alcohol? Um, in my experience anything less than that like 70% does not give the same results. So I just keep the 99 um, rubbing alcohol in my craft room for this technique. So can you see how those inks are moving? Now I'm going to do the same thing over here. So those squigglies no longer remain squiggly. They just blend in so fun as alcohol markers do. I love alcohol ink. Magic, magic, magic. And you can just keep working the areas that maybe you want some of that ink to move around in. Like here, it's just kind of like blah. So I'm just gonna tap it again and move it around, which makes me a whole lot happier. So once you've got your ink moved where you want it to be, you can set this aside to dry, or if you're a little impatient like I can be sometimes when it comes to things like this, you can use the heat tool to to set it. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, dries really fast. So we can turn it over and that's what we have on that side. So you see how I've got the majority of those darker colors around the leaves and then kind of the muted down here. So you decide at this point if you're happy with that, if you want to move things around a little bit. I'm going to move things around just to show you that you can. Just pouncing a little bit more. And the other thing that's fun is you can splatter. So I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to tap this like that. A lot of you guys probably know that trick already. But it makes me feel like a total artist when I do things like that. Okay, that is dry. Can you see? I have a new phone, you guys. I got a new um, Samsung S22, and um, I must say, the camera on this, oh my gosh, amazing. Okay. Now it's time to glue this onto my car base because I am now happy with that. Um, you know what, maybe before I do that, I'll do my embossing since I've got my heat tool right here. So I'm gonna take my embossing buddy, put it right there. If you're hearing banging in the background, Brian's out in the garage beating something to death. I don't know why. He told me, what, oh, he's cutting, taking wood and cutting it into kindling. That's what he's doing. Let me find a block. I have to show you guys too. See, I'm so excited to be doing a video. I'm going on tangents, so excuse me for that. But I have to show you what I bought at the dollar store for my blocks. Let me just bring this up so you guys can see. Um, so, this case, this tray is from the dollar store. I think it was like $3. And I've got all my blocks in it and my glue. So I just keep it on my desk. Normally it's right here, but that's in the way of filming. But I just have to share that with you guys. Oh, and then this, this was in the same section. So I got, sorry, maybe I should zoom out. Hearing on. There we go, that's better. So yeah, this was in the same section. So I got this little one. Oh, and I also put, I, uh, everything's gotta be pretty. So I glued designer series paper um, inside this tray and also inside this tray. 
and then that fits in right there like so and I have to tell you I am loving loving this for my blocks all right let's go back to the card grab a block let's grab a bigger one and my first mark Pulling in my gold embossing powder now. I'm going to sprinkle this on. Isn't that nice? Okay, I need my silicone craft mat because I am going to put some glue on this now. And I'm using a piece of our old Stampin' Sponge. And let's get some glue. Spread it all around. I want to cover the whole piece. Ugh, you want to be careful you don't get glue on the front. That would not be good. Okay. Got some cat fur in there. That's always a nice added element to your cards. All right. Now, I'm going to pull in my light. And I'm going to position this right in the middle. Okay, cat fur, you're in the way. There we go. Seriously, look at that cat fur is showing right through my thumb. Guys. <sighs> Gotta love those cats. I'm trying to do this quick so my glue doesn't dry too fast on me. So are you glad I'm not editing this photo or this video? <laughs> Or not, not very much of it anyways. Okay. So you want to do this in sections to make sure you don't get any um, bubbles. You want to get this on nice and even. Now look how that shows up on the white. Oh my gosh. Lord, 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 that is so pretty. Okay, so now, wow, I like that even better than my original card. Oh my gosh. Okay, we need some ribbon. And I have a piece right here. This is our gold vanilla ribbon. And let's get some tear and tape, which is right here. And I'm going to put the ribbon down along the bottom because I really don't want to cover all of this up. But I have a nice gap right here. So I'm going to take my tear and tape and put it right here. Just cut a little bit off and that fur is stuck to my finger. There we go. Okay, fold that over. Fold that over. Um, take your thick tool. I didn't even measure that ribbon to see if it's going to go all the way around. I'm just going to put that right there. Hold that over. Get my scissors. Hold that over. Now I'm going to put this on the card base. Did you guys know there's a fine tip on this glue and also a bold tip? Not everybody realizes that. I'm going to use the bold tip. And that's a lot of glue right there.
see look how pretty that mint macaron is considering there's none of that ink in the Stampin' Blends that I used but because you get all the different tones where everything's blending in you get all the different shades right oh my gosh guys I'm so glad I filmed this for you guys that is gorgeous I'm so happy with that okay so now I need um, I don't know why I, I don't really have room for a bow so I'm gonna just grab a piece of that ribbon and make a knot of course now that I want that ribbon I can't find that ribbon but I know I have that ribbon here because I just used it okay. mm, I wonder if I can take this and make a knot I bet you there's enough then nothing gets wasted oh yes plenty hello that's awesome okay so I'm gonna trim this up and put that right on there with a glue dot this is one of my old style glue dots because the glue dots are on the top of the strip instead of behind it which is so much better okay I'm gonna put this right here in the center like that and then I'm gonna take another glue dot because I like to position these ends in, in, in their place and another one where do we want that one maybe like that there now I'm gonna take some festive pearls which are one of my new favorite things I'm just gonna stick them willy-nilly here and there I'm gonna put five am I using silver I can't even see I think that one's a silver one yes it is I don't want silver um, maybe we'll use a couple of these light blue ones instead of all gold um, put that there. and inside card I know I had the paper cut yep. so this is the same size this is four by five and a quarter same size as the front so I'm gonna stamp something on there you know there are leaf images in here so let's go ahead and add a couple of those to the inside of my card I know I don't always show what I stamp on the inside of the card for my sentiments I've had some people ask me about that but that's only because um, I don't always know what the card is going to be for if it's gonna be for a birthday or um, an anniversary or whatever so I tend to stamp the sentiment inside my card afterwards same with the birthdays I mean you can stamp a general birthday um, message but um, sometimes it might be a belated birthday or a masculine birthday and I might have something a little bit different so I don't know I just tend to stamp the inside as I need to so I just inked that with soft succulent and now I'm going to take my old olive and I'm just going to lightly tap the edges and stamp that there which I really didn't get that much old olive so I'm going to do that again actually this time I'm going to do it with old olive first so I just wiped my stamp first I don't want to contaminate my ink pad and I'm off camera sorry so let's do that again I'm going to just go around the edges this is known as the rock and roll technique yeah let's do that here ah uh, there more of the two tones parakeet party because why stop stamping when I still got images I haven't used in this set I'm gonna do that one just with the the one color I'm just gonna go over here and then I'm gonna stamp again up here didn't have that fully inked 
I'm going to stamp again and stamp off and go up here so it's uh, faded. Clean my stamp and now I'm going to go into my mint macaron. I'm not gonna put flowers on this one. Where do I want you to go? I don't know. I'm gonna go there. There. And beside it without re-inking. here and again without re-inking. I love that gradual look. I'm going to stamp off and stamp down just to fill that in. So there's my stamped inside piece. And again, I will stamp my whatever I decide to stamp on the inside at the time of personalizing this. My limited edition set on the back, so I'm going to stamp handcrafted from the heart. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, Forrest is in here snoring away on my computer chair. Um, I'm just going to use tone on tone because this mint macaron is right beside me. Do you guys always stamp the back of your cards? I love stamping the back of my cards and my envelopes. You know what? Let's stamp the envelope while we're here. Okay, I just had what I think is a good idea. I'm going to use the embossing folder on my envelope. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope I've given you some inspiration and that you can try this technique with your embossing folders at home. If you haven't already, I encourage you to hit the subscribe button and if you like this video, please do a thumbs up. That would be awesome. And I will be back real soon with some more videos for you. Take care and happy stamping.